Stan Rodriguez. I'm a Ipai Kumiai from the Santa Isabel Band of the Ipai Nation. Santa Isabel is a reservation here in San Diego County, close to Julian. Uh, I'm on tribal council. I'm a legislator for, for my tribe. I'm also a, a veteran, United States Navy veteran, a Desert Storm vet. I was a sonar technician in the Navy and um, during uh, Desert Storm I was visit boarding search and seizure. And today here to, uh, oh, and I also teach here at Cal State San Marcos. I'm a doctoral candidate finishing my doctorate. And uh, also uh, come over here to teach some of our culture. So today what I'm teaching, uh, teaching the, the students here, is how to make what we call a hakuin. And a hakuin is an acorn storage basket. We're getting close to October, and October, November, that's when the acorns start falling. This is one of our uh, main crops that we have. So this is a time when families go out and we, you know, we all go out together on the weekends and we harvest acorns and um, a lot of good times to spend together, tell stories and uh, just, you know, uh, you know just, just, just being together, you know, I mean, just reaffirming our, our ties to this land. And the hakuin, or the acorn storage basket, is a big part of that. I learned how to do this, make these storage baskets for my cousin. Her name's Bonnie Osuna. She's, she's also a legislator at San Isabel. She's the, the speaker of the legislative branch, so she's the head of, of, of our branch of, um, of tribal government. And she was raised uh, in a traditional way. She also speaks the language. And uh, this hakuin, that, or this acorn storage baskets, we, they're pretty big. They store a lot of acorns. So she told me that most baskets women will do, but these baskets, a man, uh, they prefer men to make them because they're so big and there's a lot of twisting that goes on. So it, it takes some time to, to, to make something like this. So by her teaching me, one of the things with that is that knowledge isn't supposed to be just kept with one family. It's something to be shared about. This is something we all did. So it's not only just the Ipai Kumyais that made these, also the Luceños, Kawiyas, Serranos, all the different uh, groups out here. So and that's what we have here today. So uh, it's, it's, it's nice to come out here and uh, uh, teach the people here part of what's their own culture. And as they learn, they gain proficiency with that. And, Hopefully they take that home and use that, you know, and, and, and uh, uh, revitalize, uh, revive some of the uh, practices that many people have forgotten. This hakuin, or acorn storage basket, is made out of willow. The willow's gathered about this time, you know, June, um, uh, May, June, July, August, September. And this one it has a lot of leaves on it. And the reason why we use willow is because it has natural silicidic acid. Basically what that means is it has aspirin in it. And that, and that aspirin is bitter. So uh, it's a natural bug repellent and it repels rodents. So what, what happens is when we store the acorns there, uh, bugs may try to get in it, but it leaves a bad taste in their mouth. So these are our, our, our baskets that, that we make. Uh, for our people, and, and the willow is an uh, important uh, tree for us. We not only use it to make these storage baskets, we also use it as a medicine. And like I said, uh, it has a natural aspirin to it, so we boil the bark, and if somebody has a headache, they can drink that and, as a tea. And the bark itself, we can uh, peel the bark and process that, and use that to make willow bark skirts for the women. Women use that. Uh, we also use that for the backings for our uh, cradle boards. And uh, the limbs, we can also use that. Uh, when we harvest that, we can make bows for it. it I mean, it's, it's a good uh, uh, young person's bow. It, you know, at close range, it could take down a deer. But, you know, it's a good bow to practice on. So we get a lot of different things from the willow tree. Also, from the willow tree, uh, what we do is uh, we will burn it in the winter time. We will burn uh, uh, 
uh, groves of the trees down by the arroyos. The reason for that is it, it's, it's called uh, a soft burn. And what it does is it, it, it um, uh, uh, takes away like uh, infestations of parasites, things like that. And in the springtime, because it doesn't kill the roots, in the springtime what happens is straight shoots come up. And those straight shoots, we can use those to make our awa, which are our uh, ceremonial houses or, or, or houses that we use uh, traditionally to live in. We are the Torres Martinez Bird Singers. Uh, my name is Frankie Murillo and I am from the East. Um, we're from Torres Martinez and uh, we're the team Bird Singers. <laughs> this is Lloyd Duro, Steve Duro, Andrew Stevens. Thomas Torres, Aaron Malone, and Paul Guzman. How's it going, everybody? Mia Huentish, Amechava Eva, Nechen Taming. I just want to say it's a, it's a great honor to sing birds, learn from my Uncle Ernie, and uh, rest in peace. You know, he taught us how to sing birds, and um, there's a reason why. So we're out here keeping it real for that reason, and um, we're just going to keep it pushing, and uh, just thank everybody that dances out there. And um, just a good representation of our tribe, Desert Kawia, uh, Torres Martinez. My name is Laureen Siskwak and I'm a enrolled member of the Fort Sill Apache Tribe of Oklahoma and a descendant of Mountain Kowea and also Donna Autumn. Well, I learned basket weaving in about 1985. I was about 25 years old and a, a close friend of mine, Cindy Alvitre and myself were starting a summer youth program for our native youth in the Riverside um, urban community uh, for our own children and other kids that Probably their families lived on, the, uh, worked at Sherman Indian High School, and other you know urban Indians in the community, and we knew there wasn't a good source of um, you know passing on culture, traditions, things like that going on. 
uh, and we wanted to pass on some of the things that um, you know helped us in our lives and that we felt were important so we started this Mother Earth Clan summer program but neither of us knew how to do baskets um, uh, we knew about them we knew the plants and but we weren't too sure about um, you know making them so we were looking for a basket weaver teacher and um, we sought out uh, Donna Largo um, she's a mountain Koya woman who um, was known for basket weaving and um, so we you know asked her if she could come teach and she wasn't available so luckily that weekend before our program started um, Donna was at a camp out that I was at for Indian Health the Indian Health camp out up in the mountains uh, on Santa Rosa Reservation and she was teaching baskets that day and so I was able to take um, a class from her but it wasn't our traditional baskets it was the round reed um, wicker style baskets that um, we, we teach also and and Donna was teaching that and so I took the class and um, that next Monday I um, tried to remember and taught it to the kids and so it was just kind of a crash course and then all of a sudden started teaching it and you know we we became um, um, pretty good at it and just started teaching it that way but it kind of planted the seeds to want to know about our traditional baskets more. I knew we used juncus and deer grass and yucca and sumac and those plants, but I didn't know how to prepare them or how to, you know, how to make a basket, our traditional style, Kauia or Southern California style. So a few years later, it took, that was in 85, so it was in um, 1991 that um, I received a scholarship uh, along with uh, three other girls of Kauia descent to take one of Donna's week-long classes on Kauia basketry and this was up at Idlewild Arts. So that's where um, learning our traditional baskets happened and we were fortunate enough to um, also be taught by another weaver that was working with her and that was Rosalie Valencia. And Rosalie and um, my um, um, grandfather are related and then Donna's husband and uh, my grandfather on our Kuya side are related so it was it was good for me I felt you know even though it wasn't learning from your you know immediate family it was a distant family but um, I, that I didn't grow up with I didn't grow up knowing them or anything but it just I was very felt blessed to learn that and that also started the the basket weaving um, in my life and, and on that level of the, the, the traditional baskets because as part of receiving the scholarship we all agreed that we would pass this on what we learned and um, you know help with any types of gatherings or her other classes and things like that so we became um, assistants you know helping with that and that went on for many years and just so we just also immediately became teachers of that sort or assisting in that and um, eventually by the year 2000 uh, Donna had um, asked us um, uh, to form an organization to support our Southern California basket weavers and it was called Nehuatem and um, we formed that organization and started having weekend campouts and um, gatherings and um, our first one was in the fall of 2000 it was up in the San Jacinto mountains and it was beautiful it was um, you know people coming together from all the different tribes of Southern California the wall that we're trying to make because you're using the same materials but um, you use different colors to make designs if you want sometimes you use this one the same but some people they like to do designs or um, but we're not making basket caps and how you wear a basket cap is like this and um, I have another one that's this one and this one um, has black on the top instead of this color and um, this one has a little it's if you look at the shapes this one's um, this one has this on the top this one doesn't this one's like um, this one goes like this if you can see how it's, it looks like beaded when you look like this, when you look from an angle like that, but um, but you wear it like this. 
that three times. Follow that same.